For the past five years, drone technology has been getting smaller and smaller. And now finally, we have an HD Whoop. But a new trend recently in the past few months, manufacturers and pilots are very interested in 10-inch large-scale long-range FPV drones. And this one is brand new. It's the iFlight XL10 drone. And in fact, the XL10 is so big, it got held up in customs for over a month. And they finally released it, shipping it to us for review. So the XL10 is actually so large that it is larger than iFlight's Cinelifter series. The Taurus X8 has 8-inch propellers, while the XL10 has giant HQ 10 by 4 props. And these are glass fiber props. They're running on Zing motors that are also on Cinelifters. These are the 3110s. They have 900 kV on here as well, so super ultra low kV. And when you fire this thing up and you come up off the ground, it has a way different sound. A low, big, burly hum when this quad takes off the ground. Uh, it, it, it sounds even way different than a 7-inch. And just to give you some scale comparison here, this is the Chimera 7 Pro V3 right here. And look at the size difference between a 7-inch long-range FPV drone. Like, you guys thought this was big? check out the XL10. It demands respect. Uh, when I plug this thing in, I, I get away from it super quick. But we're going to take it out now. We're going to line of sight fly at first. We're just going to make sure it's all happy and it's not going to flip across the ground and crash. You got to make sure your props are on right. And beta flight is all completely set up on this quad. So we're going to do that first. And then we're going to do an FPV range test with it. We're going to fly up and down the hills and in the valleys and over the river in Oregon and see how the XL10 does. And uh, hopefully this custom tune that iFly gave us on here is going to perform with such a large airframe because honestly, it's almost impossible uh, to tune a 10 inch on such a large frame if you build it yourself. So um, very hard to tune the very large props. There's so much vibration on here to, uh, to get rid of, but the Blitz F7 should be able to handle it. And uh, I'll share this tune with the community too. If you guys want, if you're building your own, you can check out the links down below for your XL10 build. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally put DJI 03 on mine because I think this XL10 deserves this. So uh, without further ado, let's go out and line of sight flight test it. And then we'll do some FPV. After that, we'll come back to the bench and I will give you a little closer look at the XL10 that I have here. Uh, Bind and fly one coming up soon. Here we go. All right, guys, we're here. We're at the field, so we're going to go ahead and do a flight test of the iFlight Nazgul XL10. First thing I'm going to do is put it on the ground. I'm going to do a little line of sight hover test, make sure all the props are on right. I'm also going to wear leather gloves when I plug this thing in because the props are massive and I cut the tip of my finger off a while back. So I don't, I don't want to repeat that process and maybe lose a hand with a 10 inch prop. These things are gigantic uh, and up in my face. It's pretty intimidating. So let's go ahead, put it on the ground. Let's do a line of sight flight test first. Make sure everything's hovering right. And then we'll go ahead and do some FPV after that and uh, do some big 10 inch long range cruising. Okay, oh my god, that seems like it's ready to go. Let's go ahead and do some FPV.
was a lot of fun and slightly terrifying at the same time. Uh, it felt really smooth, felt really big, but it also felt like it wanted me to freestyle it, which is kind of a crazy feeling on this Lion pack, and I really didn't want to do that because I don't want to push it too much because I want to test this pack out and see what the longest flight time is coming up on the channel. But for right now, let's go back to the studio real quick, and I'll show you the XL10 on the bench and what it's all about and uh, how thick these arms are. They're crazy thick. Just, I mean, funnest thing I've flown in a long time. All right, guys, welcome back from that epic, epic flight test. You know, I was like scared to plug this thing. It's so big. It's, it's one of the largest FPV drones I've reviewed on the channel. Years ago, I got the version one of the original XL10. And man, this has had come a long ways. Now it's retrofitted for the DJI 03 or the Cadex Vista, if you want to put that on there. Um, and it's cool because you can put an analog system on here as well. So if you want to build one up cheap and have a, just a giant long range quad, this XL10 frame kit comes in at around $109, which I think is, is pretty decent for, for what it is. I mean, we have 3K carbon fiber on this frame. It has massive eight millimeter arms and the guys are talking about that in the discord I said man those arms look huge yeah they are they're eight millimeter beveled 3k carbon fiber and the meat of the xl10's power system is the zing cinelifter 3110 motors and those are 900 kv we talked about that in the first part of this video we have standard size bolts on top it does uh, it has little teeth that stick up on the top of the surface mount for the blades not to slip around once you tighten these down but there's not a lot of room left at the top of the shaft because these props are so massive and just look at the top of this motor the Cinelifter 3110 is gorgeous from the top it has a beautiful anodized blue aluminum stator with super thick copper coils in here 900 kv is is great for this size we we need a ultra low kv so that we don't have a high amp draw from the battery um, and they seem to be pretty efficient for now but i also have to tell you guys that it felt like it wanted to freestyle it felt like it wanted to do some dips and dives and i i did do some mild dives with it but i really didn't want to bottom out this quad uh, because i really don't want to crash it i just want to cruise it and here's a little close-up look at the HQ prop. And this is a glass fiber prop here, uh, carbon infused prop. It's the MQ 10 by 453. Um, and, and again, it does have a fairly, fairly low pitch. It's not a super aggressive prop, but that's what we're looking for when, we comes, uh, when it comes to efficiency and, and a low amp draw. And this is just one of those things that you need to see it to believe it. Uh, we have a, a, a wheelbase of 420 millimeters. Uh, and I'm just going to take my measuring tape here and put from tip to tip here across horizontally. It's got a wingspan of around 21 inches, 21 and 5, 8 inches. Uh, that's, that's pretty wide uh, side to side there, much wider than the Chimera's wingspan. Uh, now from diagonally from back to front here, we've got, I want to say it was almost like 20, almost 27 inches from back to front. Yeah, 26 and three quarter inches from back to front there on the diagonal axis. And as far as body length goes, it's very similar, if almost identical, to the length of the Chimera Pro 7. Uh, but it does seem to have lots of truck bed, as we call it, for battery space on top. And very interesting that the body lengths are almost identical from the Chimera to the XL10. And here's a tip for you guys. If you want to mount this 6S 4500 milliamp battery, you have to do it vertically because it's such a large and wide battery that the props hit it when they come around if you put it on flat. So uh, I learned pretty quickly before takeoff that I was gonna have to do a vertical mount. You also get two extra large size straps that will hold this 4,500 milliamp battery and possibly the 8,000 milliamp battery that iFlight makes. And right dead center of the XL10, we have the Blitz F7 V1.1 flight controller. It has fully customized tune on here from iFlight. And again, I'll share this with the community if you guys would like to have a copy of my CLI dump, I can give that to you, uh, no problem for your custom builds. It also has 55 amp four-in-one ESCs with BL Heli 32 on board. 
running those 3110 motors. Across the bottom of this frame, we have a plate down here that, again, that's three millimeter, 3K carbon fiber. And we kind of have a mix up down here of M3 hardware, uh, just a little bit of extra M2, M2 holding on the VTX in the back back there. On the back of the quad is where the GPS magic happens. We have the brand new Blitz M10 GPS on here. And I was getting around 17 satellites with that. We also have our Mortal T mount there going side to side. Our XT60 mount coming off about a 40 degree angle off the back of the quad. And our extra long range antenna back here. I love that this is long uh, and not a shorter antenna or a medium size antenna. And we also have uh, kind of a tip for you guys. If you're plugging in this 4,500 milliamp battery, you wanna make sure that this lead right here is secured. Uh, I just use a little zip tie to keep it centered here and not wandering out into the prop here because when this prop comes around, it does come pretty close to the frame right here. Uh, and any wires just kind of wandering off the side of the frame right here could result in a, a battery strike. Uh, you definitely don't want that while you're flying a 10 inch. And oh yeah, we also have a super high powered VTX for analog FPV in the back. I have the Blitz Whoop 1.6 watt VTX on there. And this is about a $40 VTX, um, but super high powered. And this VTX right here, honestly, if you crank that power up to 1.6 watt, you're gonna be able to fly um, probably further out than your battery can allow you. Uh, right now, I, I believe this would easily go out six miles out and back. Um, so if you wanna go super long range, 1.6 watt will get you way out there. And in combination with Crossfire, uh, you're gonna be able to pretty much go as far as you want, uh, but you have to be careful not to, to kill your battery. You need enough battery to make it back home. This VTX also has um, eight bands and 40 channels on board, and it also has smart audio, so I was able to change inside the goggles the VTX power band or the channel. And if you look just above the VTX, you'll see a little shiny TPU tray right here. That is where our TBS Nano Crossfire receiver is, and it was pretty easy to get to the bind button with a bamboo skewer. And the race cam up front does seem to fit nice and snug. They've also put carbon adapters on the side of this camera so that you can pull those carbon adapters out. You can kind of see one right here. If you pull that out, then you'll have enough space in there to add your DJI 03 or CADX camera. Um, that's kind of a nice option that they give you there. I also noticed that they already put in the silicon dampeners on the side as well, even though it's an analog setup you get those along with the frame kit, which I thought was super nice. And it seems that this camera has plenty of side plate protection with the aluminum aircraft, aluminum front stands. I also noticed that they didn't give the extra front end on it with the standoff in the front uh, for an extra bit of low protection guard like they have on the Chimera 7. I would like to see that type of setup there, but it's nice that they give us the option to mount either camera, either the analog or the O3 on this airframe. So, you know, my takeaway at the end of the day when the XL10 V6, this bind and fly version, it's analog, but I've been flying DJI for a while and, and this feels great. This feels amazing to fly this quad. Um, it is more fun than anything I own. And I, I, I've, I've said, this before about so many other drones like when this one came in i'm like well if this is the last quad i ever have i'll be super stoked with this and i'll just fly that till till my you know my end of my days um this one came in and now i'm like wow this is this could probably be the last quad i ever own this is freaking amazing if i retired tomorrow i would be happy with this and and it gives me that feeling it gives me the feeling all over again of feeling like an, an explorer when i go out to explore my landscape, my terrain. Um, you know, it gives me that early feeling of FPV when we were building things from scratch and we were doing things that had never been done before and we were building new systems along the way. And here we are um, kind of with a, a hybrid Cinelifter in a way. This is not exactly a Cinelifter, but then again, it's not exactly a five inch race quad either. So it's somewhere in between um, like a freestyle drone x-class and like a cine lifter it's it's kind of its own animal the 10 inch fpv drone and and i think until you fly it and hear it take off 
for the first time. We're really not going to know, um, but hopefully this video kind of gave you a little bit better outlook of what 10 inch long range FPV is all about. And it, it just gives me that Explorer feeling all over again. I, I feel like um, the Wright brothers with this particular quad and uh, the rush is real with 10 inch. It is just a rush to fly. It fires off all the endorphins um, in your head when you're flying this and your, your hands are almost shaking when you finally come back and land this on your landing pad. Um, I highly suggest being super careful in beta flight when you set everything up, put your props on. These are props out configured. Um, and again, I will share my CLI dump with the community so that when you go to set yours up, all the GPS parameters and everything like that should be set up in my CLI dump as well as that custom tune for the XL10 directly from iFlight out to you guys. So you can find that CLI dump in this video description as well as this frame kit and all the parts and motors and everything you need to build up yours if you want to. So contact me if you want more information on this one. Um, do you want me to custom build one of these? We also have a build service on our website. It's dronecamps.com. You can get DC Care as well. Um, a pretty cool service to build uh, and tune and, and set up any quad out there so um, super fun and that's brand new for dronecamps.com but i appreciate you please do subscribe on this channel for more epic fpv videos coming up especially more videos with the xl10 i look forward to it uh, and i'll be building up some more 10 inch fpv drones on the channel coming up so uh, somewhere yeah between a cinelifter and a freestyle drone it's the 10 inch fpv long range drone guys take care and I'll see you on the next one.